Papa, thank you very much for what you're doing. This is so important. You're trying to break the silence of European media. You have to understand where this began. This we're not here just talking about something which is just inceptive. We're not even talking about something which began a year ago. We're talking about the president of that uh, Euromaidan, in which the media took a side. Our media took a side. If you watch BBC coverage, Daniel Sanford, they are really cheerleading for that. And then what's happened after that is they've continued to take that side, which is this ostensible pro-Ukraine side, because to change course, to change horse would be to retract, to renege and all which had come earlier. So unfortunately they've stuck with a position which they took initially, which was a mistaken position, which was a position based in geopolitics or convenience of simply finding a convenient baddie in the form of Russia, Putin. For all these reasons, we have a media that's kept quiet about things such as the massacre that we're here today to commemorate Odessa of a year ago it was hardly in our news, it was hardly featured. And yet at the same time, whenever there's been something which they could blame on the people that they've called separatists or even terrorists, it's been all over the news. And you don't know, you know, as a viewer, how news works. I, I've seen how news works. I've seen James Mates of ITV at a demonstration in Donetsk of Ukrainian protesters, and I've seen him just film the peaceful protesters and completely ignore the guys with masks, the guys with weapons, and then say afterwards that this peaceful march was attacked by pro-Russians, when really it was led by a private sector who marched them into a fight, but they didn't show any of that. So that's literally how media works. I've seen that. I've seen Daniel Sanford of the BBC call me from a hotel in Donetsk and say, uh, Graham, what's happening in Slavyansk? Because he's not there, he's sitting in his hotel lobby. I've seen that. I know how media works behind the scenes and unfortunately all you see is what they present which is this warped, distorted and twisted picture, this misrepresentation, this lamentable, this reprehensible, this disgraceful, willful twisting of a situation that has a real human cost because our government in Britain supports this, this Ukraine but it's not really Ukraine now it's it's an insult to what was Ukraine. It was a beautiful country. I lived in Ukraine uh, before Euro 2012. I lived in Odessa. I really liked Ukraine as a country. It was, it was cool. Um, but now I can't support, and since Euro Maidan, I haven't been able to support, and no one of conscience who's there, who comprehends what this flag now stands for, can support that. This is a flag which is killing civilians in the East, is shelling them indiscriminately. This is a flag which was flown as these activists were burned alive in a building. Now, I knew these activists, I've been in marches with them. These were just people, just normal people. Women, children, old people, all ages, a cross section. What they wanted was a referendum. And why did they want a referendum? They wanted a referendum because Euromaidan imposed a coup government. It kicked out a government elected just two years before. It kicked out a president democratically elected, albeit unpopular, but that's democracy sometimes. You're gonna get that. You wait another year and you elect a new president. You don't kick him out and put in a government comprised of, composed of far-right extremist factions as Svoboda, as the Pravi sector, and then expect you can say that's all cool, because it really isn't. And the people in the East said that, the people in Crimea said that, and, but unfortunately no one in our media said that. So that's the situation that we have today. And a week after Odessa, in Mariupol, Ukrainian soldiers opened fire on people marking Victory Day, but then you probably, in Britain, don't know about that either, because our media didn't care, didn't cover it. Don't sit and think the news comes to you, because it doesn't. You need to want to know the news. If you want to know the situation, you can find that out. That's, that's something you can search for. That's something you can know. The resources there in the English language telling you the real story. Don't be lazy. Don't sit and think that it's going to come to you served. Because it will come to you that way, but it won't be news. It will be propaganda. And if you digest it the same as you digest news and go along with what that then leads to, which is at the moment a situation that we in Britain have sent instructors to train the men who fight under this flag, the men who shell civilians 
indiscriminately, the men who even target civilians, then you're a part of that machine. People in Britain, you're better than that. I know my country, I know you, I know who we are. And we're not people who support what this flag perpetrates. We're not people who support that. Unfortunately, through the malaise of the European Union or the USA or whatever it is, we've become that. But wake up, take a stand, stand for what's right. That's the history of Britain. And that should be the future of Britain.